especially as a young player, like mm-hmm. being in your first whiteout, you've yeah. never, I mean, in high school, you're playing against 300 people. And sometimes these guys, the first real prime time action they get is in front of 110,000 mm-hmm. and it's loud. And it can be easy to make some mental errors in that environment, I feel like. My first whiteout was in front of about, uh, say, 135 people. <laughs> well, COVID That's year, right? Yeah. COVID whiteout. Yeah. We had the cardboard cutouts in the stands, man. Yeah, Ohio State second game. I came on a blitz. Justin Fields got outside of me. I remember this. Coach Pryor comes up to me. He says, you could have sacked Justin Fields in the whiteout. <laughs> and I just remember looking around. Yeah. <laughs> the white of the bleachers. And I'm just seeing the cardboard faces. <laughs> they probably wasn't the time to do the that. The cardboard after faces that. are disappointed in me. I'm just. <laughs> Yo, know. talk about the Illinois game after. Not not the one we just played. 2020 Illinois game. Last game of the season. Oh, my God. After the, after the game, what were you thinking? <sighs> not even after the game. Like. It was like just the fact that we had to keep going back and forth from end zone to end zone. I'm just, I'm just like, yo, like this game needs to end. <laughs> we need to handle business and get this game over with. But just after that game, I went home. Um, I don't think I left my room that night. It was, it was, it was definitely bad. And then would be wondering why we asked that. That season, 2020, was the most taxing season oh mentally. My God. Ever. Oh that, my god. Like, and that was our freshman year too. You never you'll never understand what I went through that. Like you probably went through went through a lot, but that year, just like imagine <laughs> just like this is my this is my Sunday. Like we just we would just have lost. We came back. You get in the you get in the uh the team room, which is basically just haluba with your chair, and the song's playing never would have made oh, man. it. And you're just you're just sitting there like sulking. Yeah, that losing it, it streak. Hurt. That it, losing it streak we were on was like those Sunday meetings after that. After so many weeks in a row. How was that? How was that after the fourth loss? Like, what, like, how, it, it got to the point. I mean, the first game we weren't supposed to lose. We talked about that already. Whatever that means in the Big Ten, you lose that game. So at first it's like, okay, we made some mistakes. Let's clean it up. And then it happens a couple weeks more in a row. Once we got to that point where we're just like, you, you kind of, it sinks in that you're 0 and 4 or you're 0 and 5. And it's like, it's like, have some pride. Like, like it's like, it's a, just, yeah. It's just a pride thing. And I feel like we, we handled it well when we got to Michigan. Um, obviously, going to Michigan, yeah, that was, that was a big the first win, win wasn't it? It started a four game winning streak. So that really got us out of it. But just the way that season, and then, you gotta think like we didn't have a locker. Our our yeah. locker room was, it was in Haluba. It was know? in Haluba. It was a it was a tent. It was a tent with a bunch of chairs set up. With a curtain with a curtain. <laughs> it was curtain. I remember ten, with a bunch of yeah. chairs set up. So I and mean, I feel like that brought our freshman class together. Together, though, uh, yeah. Like I I feel like we were we were tight because of that. My day was always better after practice. But I walked by y'all's class in those oh curtains, God. and I would hear y'all making small talk and making jokes. <laughs> y'all were funny. Y'all were definitely funny. When they're stinking. Yeah. No shower. Hey, just y'all gotta look around. That just that just reminded me. Y'all gotta get a mean van over on this show. Oh, a mean's oh, coming, on, coming the on the show. We're gonna have to cut half the show out because yeah. there's no tell what he's gonna say. We'll bring a mean on. Yeah. I was in Pagula, the COVID year. <laughs> that was where my locker room was. So if you were a D squad guy, you had to park at Beaver Stadium <laughs> and then walk to Pagula and change in the hockey locker room. Um, so yeah, I, yeah, I mean that rough. wasn't a great time for me. We got cold. That's a ten minute walk, you know. Yeah. Not worth it. Last whiteout. What does it mean to you? Um, do you feel like the emotions are going to come out on Saturday, where you realize, like, hey, like, you know, this chapter of Penn State yeah. is slowly closing. Yeah, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to take it in. Um, I feel like this, this season, I've been really cherishing everything. Um, really cherishing the weight room, cherishing the training room, everything about Penn State football because it really has done the world for me and it's meant the world for me. So uh, I'm really gonna i going to take it in a little more. I might stay out there a little extra after the game. Um, just just take it all in for real. What would you say your favorite thing about Penn State football is? As collectively, through the years, what's been your mo- like your favorite, not memory, but your favorite thing that we consistently do? I got to say relationships. Um, yeah. I've met so many people because of this and – I've met people that really could change my life, um, even if when it doesn't even come to football. So I, I'm incredibly thankful to Penn State for that. And I've I've met friends that I think I'm I'll probably have at my wedding and have when I have my first kid, my baby shower. Like that's that's way way beyond football. 
Yeah. That's what makes Penn State special, man. Yeah. In 2023, it's not a lot of places that you can go where they're preaching family to you in mm-hmm. recruiting. And then when you leave after your fifth year, fourth year, you're saying the same thing. Yeah. Where it's the family, it's the relationships. Those are the things that you miss. Yeah, and the one thing, the one thing I'm scared about is I always hear Coach Franklin talk about um, when you get out of the locker room, you always going to want get back, to uh, get back in. So I'm definitely cherishing the moments in the locker room, cherishing my guys. Like, I, I was just uh, joking with Jaden Sider the other day, like, telling him, get out the locker room. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, just, like just, like, stuff like that, man. Yeah. Re- hot, though, re- like, do you miss the locker room? The locker room is the only thing I miss about playing football. The, ho- yeah. the locker room was a little different when they was there, though. It's still How the locker so? room. You know, it's yeah. still the locker room. They they had some. They had a lot of guys though. A lot of funny guys. We were we had a class full of comedians. Oh my god. We had a lot of talent in our class too, but once the talent started getting drafted around year three, and the guys who I mean, there was still some talent in the room. <laughs> but there was still some guys in there who maybe weren't as talented. You were still there. I was still there. <laughs> um, but we got funny because of it. You know, yeah. you go through enough adversity. You play college football long enough. You learn how to make everything a joke, man. Yeah.